Hi there. It's June the 25th, and we're continuing our progress through the Acts of the Apostles, written by Luke as a sequel to his Gospel. And we're in chapter 16, reading from verses 16 through to verse 40. We found, uh, we left Paul and Silas having uh, arrived in Philippi and having led to Jesus a woman called Lydia, a purple seller, and she is now uh, in. She's she's now hosting them in her house, and as they go to the place of prayer, which was the place we saw before uh, down by the river, as they're going to this place of prayer, they're followed by a girl, a slave girl, and probably the slave girl is speaking with a very strange voice, because she is inhabited by what Luke calls a Pythian spirit a spirit of Pythion, Pythia, Python. And this was the spirit that inhabited the priestess at the Delphian Oracle. The or Oracle at Delphi was a place where pagans went to get their fortunes told. And so uh, what Luke is saying is that this slave girl is possessed by the same evil spirit that possesses the uh, Delphian Oracle. And she's making good money for her masters at this fortune-telling racket that they're running. But as they go down the street, this girl is following Paul and Silas, and she's saying, quite rightly, that these are the servants of the Most High God. Listen to them. <clears throat> but Paul doesn't want this kind of publicity. And so he turns around and he basically says, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he expels the spirit from her. And then she is freed. But of course, she's no longer able to tell fortunes. So she's no longer able to make money for her masters. Her masters drag Paul and Silas into the marketplace and they complain that uh, the, the Paul and Silas are bringing foreign ideas that are not lawful for Romans. They are going against the, 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 the cultural norms of the time. And the magistrates command them to be stripped and beaten and then thrown into prison. And so Paul and Silas suddenly summarily find themselves, summarily because they don't have a trial, they're thrown into prison and right in the inner prison and they are chained to the stocks overnight. Uh, while they're there in the stocks, they're singing and they're praying. It's very interesting. Paul and Silas are no introverts. They're sitting there at midnight singing hymns which the other prisoners can hear. Even in this terrible moment, they are uh, declaring the goodness, the good news of Jesus. And around the middle of the night, there is an earthquake and Paul and Silas are freed. Not only they are freed, but it rattles the whole foundations of the prison and the prisoners are suddenly freed. When the prison jailer hears what's happening, sees what's happening, he's terrified because if any of his charges escape, he would be subject to torture and death himself under the Roman law. And so he's about to kill himself because he realises otherwise he's going to face uh, an even worse fate. Uh, but Paul says, shouts out, don't harm yourself. Everyone here is safe. And then the jailer appeals and says, what am I going to do to be rescued? How can I how can I get out of this terrible situation I'm in? And Paul says, trust in Jesus, you and your household, and you will be rescued. You will be saved. And so at that moment, the jailer uh, believes and his household believes they are baptized that very night. This shows the importance of immersing in water in the name of Jesus on confession of faith. They do it that night, even before uh, Silas and Paul have had a meal and had their wounds treated. It's absolutely amazing how key this seems to be. And then in the morning, the magistrates send uh, messengers to say to Paul and Silas, OK, you've served your night in the prison, you've had your beating, now you can go. But now Paul pulls out, uh, Paul and Silas now pull out a trump card, which they play. And they say, we are Roman citizens. And the way you have treated us is not legal for Roman citizens to be treated. You should have put us on trial. We have no trial. We should not have been beaten without trial. And now we want a personal apology from the magistrates. Well, the magistrates come tail between their legs and they are very apologetic. In fact, they are afraid because if, if the governor gets wind of this or if this gets back to Roman authorities, they could be in big trouble for having treated Roman citizens in this way. And so they apologise to Paul and Silas and they ask them to leave quietly. Paul and Silas decide they will go, 
but not before they've gone back to Lydia's house and uh, encouraged the, 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 the small gathering that's there, the gathering that has been continuing since they first arrived in Philippi. And so they decide to move west uh, uh, and leave Philippi behind. It's an amazing story of God's ability to rescue and to save and for the power of the good news of Jesus to be seen right in the middle of the most terrible situation and also for the power of praise that continues even through hardship with Paul and Silas continuing to sing and praise God in the middle of the night when they're in a dire situation. Let's be encouraged in the power of the Holy Spirit that he's able to lead us and to cause praise to rise up from our hearts even in the most difficult situations and to see the good news of Jesus bearing the fruit that it so rightly deserves. Have a very good June the 25th.